Yo, what's up guys? I'm excited to make this video. Let's go. Hmm, which one? Like the Roshis. Yep, we good. Yo, where's my keys at? It's usually right here. What's going on? Yo, what's going on, man? Someone in my car? Yo. Yo, who's in my car right now? What's going on? Annabelle, what are you doing? Daddy, leave me alone. I'm just trying to play some games. What are you playing? Play Mario Bro 3. Man. I'm trying to make a video. Come on. I gotta make the video some other time. Alright. Uh. Alright. If you watched one of my previous videos, I went over the Nexus 7 mod and how I used it. But I didn't really go in depth on how and why I did the mod. So let's do that. I'll show you guys my setup, my experience modding it, and my opinion on if you should do it or not. Alright guys, let's go. First off, what is the Nexus 7? The Nexus 7 is a 7 inch Android tablet that was released back in 2012 and the second generation released in 2013. It has an NVIDIA Tegra 3 quad core chip with 1 gig of memory. It ran version 4.1 version of Android which was Jelly Bean. Basically it was a very good tablet at the time of the release but that was back in 2012. But today's spec in 2019 that's some average performance with even some budget tablets outperforming it. Still it's a solid tablet for what you're paying for. Why did I do the Nexus 7 mod? The main reason I did the Nexus 7 mod is so that I can give the TL a more updated feel and technology. These TLs have little to no infotainment and for me as a technology head it feels pretty outdated. I do understand that it is a decade old car but for today's standards the Navi screen is very outdated, it's very pixelated, it's a bit slow, touches weren't always responsive, and the navigation itself is a joke. Any fairly modern cell phone has a better GPS navigation app than the one on this TL. But I'm sure there's people out there that still use the OEM Navi with no issues and are content with it. That's perfectly fine too, but not for me. I love technology and that Navi screen doesn't cut it for me. I could have easily bought a double din aftermarket radio and installed it. It would have been a lot easier, but it would have been more money also. A good Android head unit would cost at least 200 or more. So now I'll be getting into the installation process and all the hardware and accessories that I used. Just a side note guys, this is how I installed my Nexus 7 on my car. It's a 2006 TL with Navi. Installation can vary depending on which year TL you have and whether or not you have the base model or navigation. Because of that, it can get a bit complicated. But the good news is that the rabbit hole can get pretty deep on how much tech you want to put into the system as a whole. For example, you can add hardware to the setup so that you can have a backup camera. I opted out for that feature simply because I don't really use it, but it is most certainly possible. As for installation, unfortunately I can't show you guys how I did it because I already installed everything. But I will drop a link in the video description below to the DIY guide that I followed and I'll go through the process so just in case you guys are interested in doing the Nexus 7 mod yourself. A very big shout outs to all the guys that contributed to that guide. Acryozine is an amazing forum. Check it out if you have a chance guys. The whole Nexus 7 mod can be intimidating, but with research and patience, it is most definitely doable. So here's a picture diagram of how I installed the Nexus 7 in my TL. It looks a little messy, but I'll explain each item along with the modding process. Once again, this is just how I have it for my setup and my personal needs. Not the most cost effective way to do it, but it is a pretty high quality, reliable setup for what it is. So as you can see, I have the Nexus 7 right smack dab in the middle. It's located where the navigation screen is. I'll throw up some pictures of the whole process just so you guys can see how intricate it can be. 
basically you take the whole radio and navigation apart take the navigation screen off you do have to dremel a little bit of the plastic pieces to make the Nexus 7 fit along with all the wires after that's complete you mount it with some mounting putty make sure it's aligned correctly and then you get a little glimpse of how it looks so I have the Nexus 7 2013 model you can use the 2012 model but the 2013 model is just slightly more powerful I have mine powered by the micro USB OTG Y splitter it splits into two different cables as you can see from the left side the micro USB cable is to mainly power the Nexus 7. From there, it's attached to the USB car charger. That is connected to the 12 volt cigarette lighter that has two terminals, one for power, one for ground. For ground, I have it going to a random bolt underneath the dash. Pretty much any one will do. For power, it's going to a 10 amp add a fuse accessory cable that goes to the fuse box and all this is tucked in under the dash it's barely noticeable even when you look underneath it since we got power going to the Nexus 7 let's go back to the micro USB OTG Y splitter for the other connection I have a USB hub connected through USB to the Y splitter with that USB hub it gives the potential to connect anything to the Nexus 7 including wired controllers, any USB flash drives, and so on. On one of the ports in the USB hub, I have another micro USB cable. That micro USB cable has power and data going through the USB DAC. This isn't really necessary if you have the 0708 models because the 0708 TLs already give you an option to plug in an aux cable through your armrest center console. Unfortunately, the 04 through 06 does not give you that option. You don't have to buy this particular USB DAC. I think it's called the FIO E10K. You can buy cheaper models, but I chose this one because of the high quality sound it outputs. I have the USB DAC connected with an aux cable. I have that aux cable connected to the USA Spec BT45 Han 3, which is the Bluetooth device that I used before to listen to music through Bluetooth seamlessly. But it does come with the added bonus of a USB port and a 3.5 millimeter jack for an aux cable. That USA spec Bluetooth device is connected through the OEM XM module located in the trunk. That's already a part of the OEM radio as a stock setup. All this is located on the passenger side of the car and runs down all the way to the trunk. So if you're deciding whether or not to do this mod, let me help you out. I have a list of pros and cons for the mod. For pros, of course, the cool swags factor. I get compliments all the time when someone rides with me in the passenger seat. They always think it's so sick that there's a tablet inside the car. It always throws them off. Next, you get a high level of customization. There's still a lot of compatible apps. If you have a particular app you can use, you can download it through the App Store. Next, you can watch movies, play videos, and even play games. I don't recommend doing it as a driver, but it's still possible. Next, navigation, Google Maps are much more useful than a stock OEM Navi. If you have this car, you already know that the screen is very pixelated and the stock OEM Navi is very laggy. You're going to be thankful for having a very clear screen using navigation. Trust me on that. Next, you have the potential for Android Auto slash Apple CarPlay with a device called CarLinkit. There's not much info on it yet, but I'm going to explore it in a future video. Another pro, you can revert back to stock if needed. If I ever plan on selling the car in the future, and they want to get rid of that tablet or I want to get rid of that tablet I can return back to stock it just takes a little bit of time there's probably a bunch more that I'm forgetting but these are mostly all the pros that come to mind 
All right, unfortunately, you can't have some pros without some cons. For cons, unfortunately, you have to be a fairly tech-savvy person to get it up and running. You do have to know how an Android tablet runs and be able to root it. Another con is you run the risk of doing something wrong and potentially destroying the navigation screen and even the radio. Chances are very slim, but it is still possible, just a heads up. Another con, you're definitely going to run into issues and you have to be okay with it. Timur's kernel isn't 100% perfect, but it is the best thing for the Nexus 7. If you run into any power issues, wires accidentally disconnecting, etc., you have to be able to troubleshoot it yourself, unfortunately. Another bad thing, the Nexus 7 is eventually gonna die. It's just not made to be in a car with the constant change in temperature. The tablet takes a beating internally. Extreme heat and cold will decrease the lifespan of the tablet, unfortunately. Oh man, so that was a ton of information. If you felt like I missed something or have a question, feel free to drop in a comment below and I'll try to help out. So now you might be asking yourself, should I do this mod? Is it even worth it? I can't really answer that for you, but I can most definitely steer you in the right direction. Straight up, if you want to save money, if you have some knowledge on how hardware and the software side of tablets work and you can work on the interior radio of your car, I would most definitely say go for it. But piece of advice before you even go tackling it, make sure you take a look at the whole DIY guide. If you're fairly comfortable with all the steps and procedures you have to make it to work, definitely go for it. There are things that you can opt out for and that's perfectly fine. But otherwise, if you don't have any knowledge in rooting a tablet, how car stereos work, how to wire them, and you want something just to plug and play, then unfortunately this isn't the mod for you. There will be some troubleshooting that you will eventually have to do. And the Nexus 7 is not 100% reliable at times. If you get it installed by someone else and something goes wrong, then unfortunately you're going to be out of luck. Alright guys, that about wraps it up. Give it a like if you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.